When Kai Sinet bought the G1 robot for a staggering $70,000, it left many people scratching their heads. Why does it cost so much when Unitree's website lists a G1 model for just $16,000? The truth is, while both robots look identical on the outside, the same standing dimensions and even the same folding dimensions, the devil is in the details. Today I'm breaking down the massive differences between the $16,000 toy version and the $70,000 powerhouse Kai owns. And I am using 11 labs to voice the script, but I assure you it won't affect the quality of the video or change the massive differences between these two robots in any way. First off, the most notable difference is the degrees of freedom. These are joints for those who are not familiar with the other term. The cheaper version has just 23 degrees of freedom, which translates to fewer joints and far less flexibility. This means the robot can only perform basic capabilities like walking forward and backward, turning, sitting, or waving. It's like a fancy remote-controlled toy with pre-programmed actions. Think of it as a metal mannequin that can shuffle around. But Kai's $70,000 G1? It's a monster with 41 degrees of freedom. Extra joints in the waist, arms, and wrists unlock advanced dexterity. For example, it's three-fingered hands that Kai can buy later, can grip, twist, and even sense pressure with optional tactile sensors. Meanwhile, the base model's hands are literally static plastic. No movement, no upgrades, no nothing. You can't even attach advanced hands to the cheap version because its wrists lack the necessary joints to support them. Then there's power and performance. The cheaper one's knee joints max out at 90 newton meter of torque, enough for light walking but not much else. Its arms can only lift 2 kilograms, or 4.4 pounds, so forget carrying anything heavier than a grocery bag. Compare that to Kai's robot, which boasts 120 newton meter knee torque, almost matching figure 02. This makes Kai Senas version capable of dynamic movements, heavy lifting, and even sports applications while the base model struggles with anything beyond a casual stroll. Computing power is another crazy gap. The cheaper version runs on a basic 8-core CPU with no expandability. It can't even process complex tasks or support AI upgrades. It's stuck with preloaded actions like squatting or waving. It's essentially a glorified demo bot. But the EDU Ultimate C version comes with an 8-core CPU, an optional 100 tops NVIDIA Jetson Orin for AI-driven tasks, real-time environmental interaction, and future autonomy via OTA updates. This is a robot built for developers and researchers, while the base model feels like a stripped-down prototype. Finally, on customization, the cheap G1 is locked down. No programming, no adding sensors. You can't do any modifications to it. It's a closed system designed to show off humanoid basics, not to innovate. But for Kai's version, Unitree provides full SDK access, development manuals, and modular upgrades. So is the base G1 a scam? Not exactly. It's a gateway for hobbyists to experience humanoid robotics. But if you want a robot that can do something, not just walk and wave. Kai's EDU model is the only real option. Although since it is not yet autonomous, it means it won't do much for you either.